Hello crafters. Hello. I am so glad that you're here with me today. If we have not met, my name is Carrie Gelato, and I am one of Heartfelt Creations online instructors. So for those of you that were with me on last week's video for the release of the floral sentiments, I wanted to apologize. I got confused on the specials and I told you the wrong one. So the special for May is spend $100 and you will receive a free paper pad. So there are still lots of great paper pads still available. If you have some, a favorite one that you're wanting to go for, you do want to go over and take advantage of that because they will start selling out. So you, you'll want to do that. So, all right. So for today's project, um, I've got a little uh, scene card for you. So let's go ahead and switch our camera view and take a look at what we're going to make today. All right, so here's my uh, little scene for today. We will be using um, uh, several different stamps and dies, and I will try to kind of let you know if they're uh, still available or not. And um, hopefully a lot of you still have these in your uh, stash and um, you'll be able to use those. I'm just going to refresh my screen and, and get it to where I can see your comments. There we go. Okay, Angelica, hello, and Marjorie, and Debbie, and Marilyn. If you're out there watching me, do um, say hello there in the chat and uh, let me know. Hello, Lorna. All right. So, yes, a, when I made this card, there was still quite a few of them um, that were still available. But as things are selling out, I will try to let you know. So let's start with our die cutting. There we go. I'm just going to move this over a bit <clears throat> okay so our main die that we're using is the slim star uh, the uh, slim star lattice rectangle die and uh, you'll want to pretty much everything except the center lattice piece we're going to be using today so out of white paper we're going to go ahead and cut this combination out of white and that's going to give us this piece right here all right then for the next we're going to just remove this piece and if you have it all taped together and then you just remove this piece and i chose to cut mine out of purple but of course you can choose any um what i i like to call the solids and uh, make that background any color, color you like but if you have that taped together and then remove the center piece then you're for sure that your uh, designs are going to match up perfectly so that'll give us this piece right here and then the final piece, I chose green, but again, any solid will work. I suppose you could even use a pattern for this if you'd like, but I just cut a solid piece that's large enough to cover this. So we're not cutting it out of this. You just want it to be larger than this. So I measure that for you real quick. Whoops. It's, um, I did mine three by seven and a half. All right, so that will uh, take care of this part of our die cut. And then the final thing we'll need is to make a slimline card. And mine measures four by nine. So you just go ahead and cut a, a base that is eight by nine and score, <clears throat> excuse me, at the four mark and fold that over. All right, so very quickly here, we'll just, uh, <clears throat> the only other piece that you're going to need whatever um, piece of paper that you cut this piece from we're going to need just a little bitty piece of scrap from that because we're going to have to fill in a few places and i'll show you about that later but uh, that's that's all the paper you're going to need for this project so far oh it looks like i i have my purple paper it came from the feathery florals but when I make cards like this with scenes, I really like to utilize uh, paper from my scraps because that just uh, is a good way to use up your scraps. <clears throat> and it, it makes your papers kind of go further. So I'm just going to quickly uh, glue this on top of the purple. So has everyone been having a uh, good start here to summer? It might be officially spring by the way the months go, but in Texas, it's summer already. It's been in the 90s of the last few days, and uh, we've been enjoying uh, summer activities. Oops. So we're going to want to line that up. Now, if when you cut yours, 
it didn't line up perfectly, that's okay. Because on our final design, we have some wiggle room, okay? So if you have one end that doesn't want to line up, whoops, mine did line up until I picked it up. Okay, we're going to cover that up. So that'll be okay. Just make one end if, it, if you do have it out of line. Okay, so now that we're here, we can go ahead and set this aside. And let's go to our stamps. So real quickly, I'm going to run you through some of uh, the stamp sets that we're using today. Oh, Marilyn says she loves the kitten stamp, the stamps and dies. So do I. They're so fun. And if you're a cat lover, then you're definitely going to want to have these sweet, playful kittens. So we, this is the one we're going to be using today, the purring and playful. And then we have the cute little uh, Miss Kitty here and several of the, oh, that's a fun one. Oh, when I look up, there's so many fun things you can do with these. And then we also have the perfect play date. So those are some good, it seems like they're, oh, here it is. We also have the option of using this piece right here. So I'm going to use this one, but I'm going to show you some ways that you could use this strip as well. <clears throat> and then the other uh, pieces that we're going to be using, and I'll just show you because I don't have the packaging for these, but this one is the um, cottage window. We'll be using that. And then you want to go through your stash and find some uh, smaller florals. So I pulled these from the floral shop. That, that's the set that comes with the big urn. But um, you could, there's some really cute tulips. There's little sunflowers. You can just kind of go through your stash and find um, several, uh, you know, florals that are kind of of this size. And then we're also going to use the Hope Your Day is Perfect stamp set and that, or stamp, and that comes from one of your kittens sets. All right, so when you get ready to uh, start stamping, I stamped our cottage window three times. And if you could do me a favor, uh, go ahead. I think my um, comments have stopped coming, scrolling in. So do give me some thumbs up if you're still able to see me and everything's good, okay? So I don't want to be messed up there. Okay, so once you are ready to stamp, we're going to stamp the cottage window. And you're going to need to stamp it three times. And I did that in the coffee color. Then this little image here from the floral set, I stamped that in the leaf green and I did that twice. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. Okay, so some can see me. Okay, then for the vivid chartreuse, I stamped this little flower here and I just wanted to give some variation to my greenery. So that's why I use these different colors. And then in the fern green, I stamped this pretty uh, greenery piece and all of these are from the floral shop. And then for my little uh, kitten over here, I stamped that. Uh, this one's called Shadow Gray, but you could really any color, whatever color you want your cat to be. I wanted my kitten to be white, so that's why I used the gray color. But uh, you could make your kitten just any color that you would like. All right, now to color these up, for the coffee color, I chose to do this with uh, a brush. Now you could also do this with our triangle daubers, but um, I find that when it's a bigger area, you get kind of a, a smooth uh, look here when you use these uh, brushes and you can just go over the whole thing. You see how nice that just kind of makes that. And it, it's very fast if you happen to have these in your stash. Now, I do come around with my triangle dauber at the end to do a bit more. Oh, good. Debbie says she can see me. Okay. Um, I'm still, everything is good. Great. <laughs> okay. So, this one, you're going to do green <clears throat> for uh, our taller flowers here. I'm going to do those in the pink peony and the vibrant fuchsia. And for those, I just, uh, I colored them all real quick with the pink peony. Pink peony is a little hard to see on camera, but I promise you it, it is on there. I can see it in person really well. It's just hard to see on camera. So there we go. And then for the uh, vibrant fuchsia. Oh, you like the brushes? Yes, they're, they're available. Lots of crafters are using them. Lots of different companies are selling them. I have to, to tell you the truth. I bought mine at a, oh, 
at a discount store and in the makeup section and they were very inexpensive. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. But it, you can get them from lots of places nowadays. Okay. So I'm going to take my trauma dommer on the top. I'm, I'm very random. I'm really just kind of tapping it on there so that you can, uh, so there's just lights and darks because our floral here is, is lots of different little flowers on a tall flower. So that's why I'm just kind of tapping it on there to give us lights and darks within that. And I'm also, when that is die cut, I'm going to come back around with this. Okay, for this little flower, I'm going to come in with tea rose. And Clarabelle, welcome. I'm glad you're here with us today. And I'm going to come in with one of my little makeup brushes. And with the tea rose, I'm just going to, do the, the the centers of my flowers. And that's all that I'm doing with the tea rose. Then I'm going to come in with the uh, sunset color and do the petals. Okay. So just some bright, cheery flowers. And of course, However you want to make your card, you might want to use totally different colors if you're using different flowers. So I'm just kind of showing you how I did mine, but uh, there's lots of options. All right, now I'm just going to use the, the uh, Vivid Chartreuse, and I'm just going to color in the, the taller pieces of this one. I'm also going to come in and do the, my, my dauber's kind of falling there. I use them so much. I do. I use these things until they just disintegrate. So <laughs> I have to replace them every now and then because I use them a lot. All right. So that takes us finished with our florals. And for the for the little kitten, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to use one end of my of my uh, makeup brush and put just a little bit of the shadow color, brush it off a little, and then right in there where I think there should be some shadow, and the the stamp set itself, that way the way they drew it, it kind of shows you where that shadow will be. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow in there just to kind of give our kitty a realistic look. And the very last thing, let's see here, what did I do with my, I'm going to take the pink peony and on the other end, now I use both sides of my makeup brush, the, the, they'll be different colors. So I'm going to get some of that pink peony and I'm going to give my kitty some cute little pink cheeks and a little pink nose. And then I'll go ahead and come in and give her little, uh, bow tie her little bow around her neck um we'll make that pink today as well and sometimes i color that the fuchsia color uh, sometimes i do it yellow but uh really just and i'm also going to put just a little bit of that uh, pink peony there in the ears okay and that takes care of all of our coloring i'll go ahead and we can die cut all of that Yes, the, the makeup brushes, the uh, eyeshadow applicators, you can definitely pick these up at a Dollar Tree or a Dollar Store discount places. And, uh, you know, that way you can you can just use them and mix up the colors. And if you need to just throw them away <laughs> and get a fresh one, it's not like you have to keep using them forever. Right. <laughs> when we spend tons of money on our brushes, then you kind of feel like, OK, I need to clean these and uh, uh make it last forever but uh when you when you get them pick them up cheap then they're not quite as uh, uh you don't have to take quite as good care of them so <laughs> just a tip okay let's go ahead and once we get our die cutting done like i said we'll have three windows and we have um some flowers now i want before we go any further on our um tall pink flowers i wanted them to really show that definition so i am going to you can see i'm just putting some of my uh johnny chow uh crisp crystal clear glitter and i'm putting it in my you could use a paper plate or whatever you use to do your glittering in i'm going to get myself my stamp block and i'm going to get my clear my clear crystal lacquer I always have to kind of get mine unclogged <laughs> and we're going to put just a little bit 
on my block here. And for all of these flowers, I want to, sorry, I'm having trouble getting that closed. There it goes. Okay. And then I'm using a paintbrush here. I have to dry it off because I keep it in water all of the time. But I'm actually going to lay my flower right there on my block. Hopefully you can see all my parts here. And um, then I'm just going to cover that. I'm going to tap that on. And then I'm going to put it face down and tap. And you see that? It is really, really crystally. That gives you lots of dimension up there. And what's nice about that is the way we colored it by <clears throat> tapping on those different colors. You see the variation in there? And then when we put that chunky glitter on there, it really uh, gives you that look that you have uh, multiple flowers on the same stem, like little bitty flowers. You get lots of dimension in there. So for, whoops, stuck to my finger. Now for the little yellow flowers, grab those. I just came in and I added just a little bit of uh, uh, the crystal lacquer there on the centers. And I did the same thing and just laid them face down, but they're just on the centers. All right. And that, I did that for all of my, my pink flowers, which I did those all in advance for us so that we don't have to wait on those to dry. <laughs> okay. So what we should have when we're done with this, clean up after myself real quick. My pile right over here. There we go. All right, so we have a couple of the green, a couple of the yellows, and some of these right here, and three windows. And we have our little kitty cat. Oh, yep, I used fuchsia there. Okay. All right, so let's start constructing our card. Hello, Diane from uh, Canada. What's the weather like up in Canada now? Is it still cold or are you guys uh, getting summer or is it rainy? All right, I'm just going to lay these out a bit. Now, to make our window, you are going to need to bring in um, this little piece here of extra that we had. And I'll show you why. We, these two pieces, your, your card base and the this inside piece, we can set aside for a little bit. <clears throat> and we're going to work on our window. Now for our window, on one of them, we're going to cut the blinds completely off. Okay, and that's going to be our window that goes in the middle. And then for one, this one, we're gonna want to cut off this side, the right side, and it's gonna be our window that goes on this side. And then on this one, we're going to cut off the one on that side, and this one will go here. Okay, now as you see, these little spots right up in here, they're going to show through. So that's where it's going to come in that we're going to add our little filler pieces. But first, let's go ahead and glue on our windows. <clears throat> Very quickly, before we do that, this one and the one that had the other, I'm going to put that in here and go ahead and score. And hopefully my head's not in it. It might get my head in things. Okay, we're just gonna score along there and fold this up a little bit. And the same with this side. All right. Let's go ahead and glue on our windows. And I like to have them kind of laid out because if you don't lay them out, you're, you're like, you don't want to do it and have like a big gap to where you didn't quite fill your space. So by laying them out first, <clears throat> it kind of gives you uh, some, trying to decide your, now they just barely fit in there. So we're going to add our, our glue just right down to the bottom. You can even add your glue here whichever way you want to do it. 
Oh, beautiful blue skies. Well, that that's wonderful. That's how we are here in Texas too. So I'm just adding the glue along the very bottom and then right up here at the very top. And I'm going to put that right in there. I think I got that in the right spot. Did I, whoops, I might have, I have to move it over just a tad. Didn't quite get it in the middle. All right. All right, now we're going to put this one in and we're going to put this one in. Okay. And you're just going to add your windows all the same way. Now, I thought this card design would make a great shaker card, but uh, I ended up in the end not doing it as a shaker, but of course you could if you would like. That would certainly look uh, fun. Now, before I go on to the next step, I wanted to tell you the dies for this window have already sold out. So if you do not already have the cottage window, the stamp is still available. Now, this image of the window, I'll show you right here, would be very easy just to cut out by hand. This is not going to be a hard thing to fussy cut. But you would not have the die to cut out the little lattice. So no problem, right? So you can just very easily with your craft knife or your scissors cut out this arch in here and then put a piece of acetate in there add some foam on the back and you could make these all little shaker windows with your acetate. You wouldn't have the little uh, crossbars in there, but you could make that a shaker card in there and give you some interest. And so even if you don't have the dies for this set, you can still do lots of fun things with this window. So I do want to encourage you if you are, uh, you know, shopping there in the warehouse clearance that just because you can't have the stamps and the dies, there's still lots of fun things you can do. You don't always need to have uh, both if they're no longer available. It, it's still uh, good to have them in your set. So now that we have it like this, we're going to turn it over. And this is where you're going to take your uh, piece, your little scrap piece that you had. And we're going to fill in these little places and I like to, I just cut a few triangles. And on this, I'm going to add my glue right here. And add my triangle right in there. You see how easy that is? So basically, I've just uh, filled in that little hole. And again, cut myself another triangle. Add my glue. And then I'm just going to take my triangle there. Let's get it the right way and cover. Make sure those holes are filled in. Right a little corner here. I'm going to use a rectangle, but the same concept. I'm just going to fill that in. Now, the, the, anything on this, on the bottom, you're not going to have to worry about so much because that is going to have our little window flower box over it. And uh, you, won't, you won't see that bottom part so much. All right. There we go. And so you can see that's nicely filled in now. And the last thing I'm going to do is to come in with a couple pieces of foam. So let me know in the comments if you like making little scenes out of uh, your stamps and dies. Like, um, you know, kind of two different card styles. You can, uh, you know, take a card front and make, add your florals and a beautiful greeting and um, more but then there's also you know creating fun little scenes and do you have a favorite do you like making the little scenes or do you prefer um, a more traditional style I think it's fun to make little scenes I, I've really been on a kick lately I find myself doing it quite <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> quite a bit okay so now we're going to move on to our flower box so we have lots of of uh, the shutters left. So the way I did this, what did I do? Oh, there they are. 
you do kim says she likes making scenes too so um, i i have a couple more scene cards that we're going to be doing here in the future that i have designed already and i'm looking forward to that i think they're fun okay so you can kind of see from the design here we're going to cut them in two And I did it so that the place where I cut was on the top and the natural bottom of the stamp was on the bottom. And then I'm just going to line them up down there. Same with this. And I think it takes four. Now, because we have four, if you wanted all of yours to have this little hinge, you could do it that way. Or if you wanted all of them not to have the hinge, you could cut all of them and do that. So you have enough here to, to do that. I did I didn't worry about that okay so once we have them all cut there is one right here that in the middle that you have to overlap and then we have whoops I'm going to do it the other way around put this one on the end and this one here so you just have to overlap them that little bit like this Okay, so now that I kind of have them laid out, I'm not going to glue them to the card, but I am going to glue them to each other. So I'm going to start with this one and just add some glue. And same with this one. And now with this one. You know what? That one's still got quite a bit of the hinge on them. I'm going to cut that off. So it's the same. There we go. Ah, thank you for all the hearts there. <laughs> and Canada. Yeah. All right. So this is going to create our window box. But before we glue this down, we're going to add uh, flowers and we're going to add foam tape. So we do not want to, to glue that down quite yet. So before I go any further, I'm going to really cut these apart and make myself some different little pieces and kind of start to, to lay them out a little bit. Here. All right, you can kind of see, and I, I cut them apart in different ways. I just wanted it to have lots of variation, and I'm just kind of laying my greenery out in different ways. Oops, let me get that one cut apart. When creating a scene card, I find it best to uh, kind of lay things out before you start gluing down. Especially with this uh, particular design, because when we start to uh, do this, we want things to be at different levels. So all of this greenery is not going to be at the same level. Okay. There we go. And one of the flowers, I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep it together. And then one of them, I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart. Okay. And the same with my pink ones. I'm going to cut some, I'm going to do tall ones and short ones. I want it to be more on the random instead of on the regular. Okay. And like I said, they're not going to be covered up, but it's it's good to go ahead and lay them out a little bit before you start gluing down. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. Okay, so the things I'm going to start on the bottom and build my way up. So the things that I want to be on that bottom level, I'm going to go ahead and glue down. 
So I'm just going to randomly pick a few pieces that I know will be good on the back. So we're going to go ahead and add this one down. And maybe this one right here. Oops, take that out. Now for this right here, this one, I'm actually going to glue it onto the frame of the card. Because it's going to be on the back. And it's going to be kind of a taller one. All right. And let's see here. We're going to go ahead and glue this down. And maybe this piece right here will glue it down. I do like the greenery, a lot of it to be kind of towards the back. And my window box. It goes on past, so I am gluing it all the way over onto because I know my window box comes past. Okay, now for the things that I want to be in the very front, I'm going to put those, I'm going to glue them actually onto the box at the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is take some foam tape. Where's my, here they are, bury them. I'm going to take two of my foam tapes. And I'm going to run it. I'm not going it to my things. I'm actually putting it on my card. I'm going to run it the whole length down to where it stops. And that will go right here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull that off. And I'm going to start adding the pieces that I want to be on the next level. And I'm going to put them right onto that foam, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to put him right here. Now, this tallest one, I'm going to put a little bit of foam on the back of this one. And he's going to kind of go up on the, the window a little bit. But this is how I go about building my scene. And this one we'll put towards the front. This one just about right here. Whoops. Okay. And do I have any others I want on this level? I think I might. I'm going to go ahead and cut the curl off the bottom of that. And this one, maybe right in there. I'll put him right back here. Don't want to have this empty spot. Okay, now before I go any further, one thing I did forget to do, I'm going to come back in with my brown, um, with my coffee ink and do the edges of my window box here because we cut that it kind of um you know it doesn't have like a real firm edge so we're just going to do a little uh, nice edge there on the top and bottom of our window box i'm just going to go all the way around and not real heavy just enough to give that a nice edge so it looks like one piece instead of uh, glued together pieces, if that makes sense there. All right, that looks a little better. Whoops, and get the lid on all the way. Okay. All right. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is well, let's go ahead and finish putting these pieces on. I think that'd be good. Put this one right about here. And then my little shorter one right about here. And now we have so, a few greenery pieces that we can still kind of put in. And I'm going to do that when it's over. Jan, thank you so much. You're liking this card? You know, I, 
I really wondered about whether I should do this because for me, I love uh, making these scene cards, but uh, I know some people it's not their, their cup of tea. So I am going to cut off these uh, little pieces that are coming past my foam. There's just a few of them. I didn't know how tall I was going to make them. Now, on you see this, I'm going to come back with one more piece of foam. And I'm going to put it at the very bottom of my piece here. You see that? All right. And now do that. And then I'm going to come back with my glue. You can make individual ones. Oh, of course. Yes. You, you know, someone had said they didn't have the slimline dies. And so they didn't think they could make this card, but certainly you could do this window box idea. You could do it with two windows or just one window. Absolutely. And now we're just going to add our window box. And look at that. I love it. I just, that makes me so happy. <laughs> it just is so pretty, so fun. Okay, now I'm going to come in and in some of these little spots where I, I see it could use a little more. I'm just going to tuck in some of these little pieces I have left. Because I have them. I might as well use them. Okay. And I think maybe this one I'm going to put right down here. Kind of coming out. Some of my flowers kind of covered up my greenery. So this is just a... Uh, Kind of way you can, whoops, I'm going to tuck him right down in here. So it's back behind. There we go. All right. There we go. Now, so while we have this out, we're going to go ahead. And like I said, I did not make this into a um, shaker card. But if you put foam on the back of all this and covered your windows with acetate, you could so easily turn this into a shaker card. I just was thinking, you know, I've done lots of shakers. I'll do something different. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down on the, on the front side. Make sure your opening is going the right way. It makes you happy too. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> and I'm just kind of centering it. I'm pretty sure I gave myself enough room that it's going to cover my windows. So I'm going to go ahead and add this on. And the last piece, well, next to the last piece is going to be my little kitten. And uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So yes, you could take this idea and so totally... Uh, make it work for uh, lots of different size cards. I think uh, even a little A2 size, wouldn't that be cute? Just a little window with, uh, I, I may have to make myself um, an A2 size, but uh, I love the sparklies. Even if you stopped right here, it's very pretty. But I think the final touch is adding our little kitty cat. Now, remember I showed you the, the, the little kitten strip where it makes several different kitty cats? If you had a family member, oh, lots of loves and hearts. Oh, thank you. So these little kittens, here's one laying on his back. He would be a fun one to put in there. If you wanted one sitting in the window, you could have left an empty spot and actually put him on the inside to be looking out the window. You can have one like walking through the flower bed. So I thought this was a cute idea. If you have somebody, you know, who has multiple cats and would enjoy seeing a family of cats inside their their window box. But for me, I chose this sleeping cat. And let me show you what I did to her to get her to work. You've got to take your scissors and cut the tail open. Okay, because we want her tail to kind of be hanging over the box. And then I had to take her foot and kind of cut it straight across. See that? So I actually cut her little foot off. So it looks like her foot is inside the box. And now I'm just going to glue her on. You can kind of pick where you want her to be. Um, I kind of put her somewhat in the center, but I like these pink flowers kind of coming up above her. And then for the final touch, I have this hope your day is as per hope your day is perfect. And I'm going to add a little bit of foam onto the back of this one. And 
On my original, I did come back with my fuchsia and just put a little bit of an edge on my uh, title here. There it is. So not a lot. I just wanted it to have a, a little bit of definition. You could matte and layer this with another color. That would be a nice way to do it too. But I like my things to kind of have an edge. So that's more personal preference. Now we're just going to pop this one on the top. And what could be a more perfect day than napping in your flower box? All right. So this is uh, just an idea of how you can create some fun scenes with, you know, some of the stamp and die sets that maybe aren't like the stars of the collections, like the flowers and, the, you know, those kind of main pieces. But there's so many fun ideas you can create with those supportive dies. And so that's that's kind of what I wanted to show you here. OK, I'm going to go ahead and switch my uh, camera view back. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, thank you so much for all the, the thumbs up and the hearts. Now, there we go. All right. Thank you so much for all those thumbs up. I, I really, really appreciate it. There are so many great stamps and dies that are in the warehouse collection right now. And if you spend $100, which doesn't take long, you will get that free paper pad this month. And so I encourage you to take a look at some of those stamps. You know, even if the dies are not available, you know, the, you can still use those stamps in so many great ways. And, you know, at the end of this year, they're not going to be available any longer. So I encourage you to just snap them up while you can. You won't regret it. And I'm going to continue to bring you ideas on how to use your heartfelt creation products for, you know, a long time to come long after the end of this coming year. And I did want to tell you that on my personal space, I do have a video that launched today at carrieleecreations.com. And it is a cute little tint card. And, and you can watch that video today. It did go live today. So that's just another idea, that another way to use some of your products. And I would love it if you uh, can follow, can check me out there as well. So uh, I think that's all I have for you today. I look forward to crafting with you again next week. And until then, have a wonderful time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.